guess the voices of angels tonight. You can just sit back in your chair and relax. You're going to be treated to some wonderful conversation and some wonderful music. A little bit later on, Cindy Church will join us. But we begin our program tonight with the McGarrigal sisters, Kate and Anna, who have been revered on the folk circuit for what, dare I say, 25, 30 years? Actually, our first record came out in 76. We were closet folk before that. You were closet yeah. folk before that. Yeah. Why so long before this album, Anna? This is six years since you put out oh, the last one. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> well, we did a bit of label hopping, let's say, from about 1990 to the present. And uh, it, it just took a while before we got on the right label to make a, a new record, which came out this past September. That is so important for people, isn't it? I mean, airplay and fighting with the record companies, and it keeps good talent down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. I, I mean, it's difficult to, to stay alive in this business. I mean, to, to actually have a label and, and to keep going. And I think it, in a way, it's better for us because then you get distributed. I mean, yeah. if you have a, you know, uh, a legitimate label, whereas sometimes if you're doing it on your own, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, put out their own stuff, but it doesn't really get very far, you know, yeah. it doesn't get much further than your hometown. Now, just because there's not an, an album, Kate, doesn't mean you two don't get together and sing. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> don't no, tell no, me no, you no, haven't no, done no, anything no, in six years. No, 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 <laughs> we actually, we all start on various projects that we want to do, like, we'll say, like, um, oh, let's write a musical, so we'll sit around and find a subject and write four or five songs, and we'll let it fall by the wayside, and then we'll say, well, let's do a project on some other thing. Yeah. And we have all these projects, and I can sit around, we play things, and we talk about <laughs> projects, and then somebody will say, like, uh, okay, let's make a record. Oh, okay, okay, we'll make a record, and then we'll, you know, work on them. No, we're always, I mean, for the but last... But you live yeah. in different places, but do you talk yeah. all the time? We talk about four times a day on the phone. Four times a day? Yeah. 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 So this is, this would be constant contact. I, and, yeah, <laughs> and that's not, and we also email each other constantly. And, and the thing is, we have ideas. It's not just on music. You know, we always have like uh, ideas for films yeah. or books or. I mean, lately we're uh, we have self-administered <laughs> RSPs. <Yeah. laughs> That's taking so up a lot of time. Isn't the it? Globe and Mail every morning now, and you know, the, getting the Nasdaq uh, figures. That's very in the morning. good. Yeah. That's very good. You're, you're excellent role models. <laughs> <laughs> now you both have kids. Yeah. What ages are, are yours? Kids? Mine are uh, kids are hardly 23 and 20. Yeah. And are they musical as well? Uh, yes, they are very musical. Yes, they're both. Uh, well, Rufus is all, Rufus, my son, is 23. He's already started a career in music. He's making a record now for uh, DreamWorks, which mm. is a uh, big label out in the West. And my daughter's 20. She's in acting school in Montreal, but she sings a lot. She sang here. She opened the show for us last November. Oh, that's great. Her, real, her name is Martha Wainwright, and she, uh, she'll do anything from songs that she's written right up through Cole Porter stuff. I mean, they, they do, they're not limited to folk music. I mean, our, our kids are kind of, we were brought up on everything. Yeah. My son does a mean Schubert with an Elvis Presley voice. I mean, it's, it's really. <laughs> Same for your kids, uh, Anna? They're musical, but I, my daughter's still in high school, yeah. and my son is, uh, he's also very musical, but I don't think he wants to go on the stage. He likes, he likes computers. computers. Yeah. But do you play as families? We have on occasion. Yeah. We've done, uh, we have. Uh, or, I mean, even, pri even in your own homes, do you? Uh, less so because, you know, I, I think when kids get to a certain age, they don't want, really want to spend a lot of time Hang with, their, with parents. their parents. But when we sang in Montreal, um, all, all our kids were there and they all got up on stage and sang with us on the last song, the last yeah. couple of songs. That's wonderful. And they were very willing to do it. Yeah. Now, perhaps your kids don't want to hang around with you because they, too, know the awful truth about the McGarrigal <laughs> sisters. Yes. <laughs> Will you two fess up? Here they are talking four times a day, saying how much they like each other. But in fact, you've been known to hit each over the head with, with guitars. Well, we, when we were kids, um, we were allowed to Still use all... Do. Yeah, we, we were allowed to play with all kinds of instruments in the living room, but we would... Uh, particularly, I liked the ukulele and the guitar, but we did smash... We would hit each other over the head. But we were four or five years old. Now, sure. what the story is that you got mandolins, or one of you got a mandolin at one point. No, no. I wanted a mandolin. You, oh, I see. And you got guitars instead. With F holes no, in we those got, days. No, no, what happened is Kate <laughs> wanted a mandolin. 
when she was, I don't know, 16 or something, and our mother decided to give us watches instead. And when she opened up her little watch box, her present, she threw the thing. I remember she threw it across the room. And she said, you knew I wanted a mandolin. And I thought, I, I, I feel terrible. I really do. Because my mother, you know, she never gave me a present after that. It really was the last. I mean, she never gave me one before that, I think. I think that was the only... It's okay. Bad experience. So I in the end, you got it to be. <laughs> in the end, you got your guitars, and you didn't like those either. They had F holes. Our grandfather had bought them. For, I think he got them out of a catalog, and we thought, oh God, you know, like this is during the time when people played nylon string guitars. And that. <laughs> These were like Western guitars. So did you trade them in, get the right ones, and and the rest is history? As well, they he, say? yeah. I mean, our mother was furious with us. We said we don't want these guitars. We'll get our own. So what happened is they they returned the guitars. We went to a pawn shop. Remember uh, No, I bought myself a guitar. It was a new guitar, but it was what in a What ungrateful shop. children you are. We were. We were. Taking but you know something? To be a star, you have to be <laughs> selfish. <laughs> you have to have the best <laughs> instruments. I mean, it's all have to play, you know, junk. Yeah. So you did that. Yeah. Did you, and did you know that you would sing together? No. No. No, not at all. Because we did sing. Uh, we were two years difference in school, and yeah. uh, we both liked, I mean, we sang. We sang because we were taught to sing at home and we could play instruments, but we weren't like, we sang because we had fun, mostly because we liked the guys we were singing with and stuff like We had crushes on them. I mean, yeah. we were kind of like doing that stuff, you know. And uh, it was only until much afterwards that we actually started singing together. I mean, as Kate and Anna, we were well yeah. into our 20s. I mean, and I mean, you were both, you'd both gone the folk route. Yeah, but that was more sort of before, and then there were a few years where we really didn't do very much of anything, and Kate decided to, just on the spur of the moment, to, uh, to become a musician. But she had a, she had a job, and she just walked away from the job and said, I don't want to be a do systems that. analyst anymore. Right. She'd done it for a, a month. week. <laughs> so now you were just performing uh, last night with Pete Seeger, I'm, uh, the, the king of mm -hmm. the folk world. Mm -hmm. Was this a gathering of the clan? I mean, do people come into town for, from um, all over? This it's, is the Folk Alliance, yeah. and it's uh, Pete is closing it. Pete closed it, and it has, um, I don't know what this, they have, I'm not sure why certain people play certain venues and other ones don't, but it is the Folk Alliance is designed to. It's, it's like a big convention of folk yeah. musicians. But are you, do you guys consider yourselves traditional folkies in the sense of the protest songs and? Uh, we're having more fun spending time with Nora Guthrie and doing stuff like. <laughs> no, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, we're all kind of. I mean, we're mostly talking about the stuff is really fun, just because there's so many people we've all known for so long. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's gossiping. Like we're gossiping. Gossiping. Yeah. <laughs> fun gossip. Not protesting, you're gossiping. No, we're yeah. gossiping. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Kate and Anna McGarrigal are with us tonight. We'll be back after this break, and you'll actually hear the sisters sing. <laughs> 